People said they missed our intro. Did you? Did we not do it last time? We didn't oh yeah, do we kind of like said weird shit. We didn't instead. do it. No, we just like kind of whispered stuff. People are upset. All right, good. To I know. think we should do it. Okay. I love that we're like people said. Was it just one person? It was like a few. Really? Like a, no like one a said two or a few. More than three. Okay. Like definitely like at three least or a few. more than three. More than three. Oh my God. Several people. Well, that's many people these I days. I know. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Staying Up with Cammie and Taryn. I'm Cammie. And I'm Taryn. And every night my wife and I get to have a sleepover, but every week we invite you to join us. So thanks for staying up. Thanks for staying up. Last week you may have seen um, the downfall of Taryn Arnold Scott. (laughs) Yeah, that was not me week, fellas. Um, What's funny is it's also not Cammie's week now, fellas. Y'all, I'm (laughs) Mizzy. One thing about some lezzies is you're never going to catch them both at a good time. (gasps) You're no. never going to be catching us I'm having both. the period from hell. Sunday, yeah. I was full depression mode. Literally put my phone on DND and was like, no one look at me. No one talk to me. No one breathe near me. Like, I need to be even I was alone and doing nothing. DND to her. Yeah. Which I feel like you can turn that off for like one person. Huh? Like, it, you can go on full do not disturb. But I know, but we- I don't want to go. Oh, I know. I, I don't want anyone texting me. No, but me. No, it's for everyone. Baby, but for me. No, because I it's it's Sunday I was just, you were with me. Yeah. Today when I had it off, it's things popping up when I'm doing something. If I'm like that. working on my phone, I yeah. can't be having stuff popping up. It's my ADD. I'm so I'll be so distracted. Yeah. And I it like just makes me anxious being like ding ding ding. And we so. can't have you getting distracted from your new game. No. <laughs> Tell the peepees what you're into. <laughs> I always have like a fixation game same um no I, you know what that's not true you go through seasons no i always have one in my pocket i you play them every day all day i'm playing i play them when i'm depressed okay got it it's my depression game and i all i have one that i'm like this is where i'm so down bad i can't even scroll tiktok mm-hmm. i need to go smooth brain i don't want a single wrinkle in there yeah that's how you know I like a puzzle that's how you know when she's down bad. Yeah. Um, when she is like meticulously trying to unpark 600 cars <laughs> on some iPhone game. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Quick Me free, girls trying to a jump. A quick free plug. I'm playing Traffic Escape! <laughs> exclamation mark. Uh, it is mind numbing. Where did you find it? I don't. Oh, I. Was I, it an ad on it, the other It was an game? ad. That's how I normally find them. I'll play a game yeah. that I'm liking and then i'll start playing the ads because i like can't Dude. have a moment of not focusing on it you know what ad i always get and i've never downloaded what? i'm curious if you have the like game where it's like the ladies freezing yeah. <laughs> the ladies freezing or the man gets like shocked by something i'm always like yeah and you know the tactic i've that- played it don't it's horrible okay good to know i liked it for the storyline i was like oh i could focus on her misery not my own baby loves the, the, the one right now is like she's dropping her newborn off at the orphanage and oh, shame. her it's super sad and sad. then her and like the older daughter are like freezing in the room and if you pick to fix the furnace before you fix the window like or you paint the walls Whoa. it's all bad um but it's nice to focus on yeah, a, really fake characters misery than my own (laughs) but the game is awful it's not about the storyline you're just like matching shit up and like making money to buy stuff it's really bad they need i don't know who is in charge of the cooking games that come out but you need to get back to work yeah there hasn't been a new one in a long time Mm -hmm. the pizza one gets boring yeah i want some of them get a little too intense though i love that i'm like dun, dun, dun. no i not then i moved to my I want, ipad i can't have a smooth brain moment if i'm I like see. actually cooking a masterpiece she needs yeah. smooth brain i do have something to share for you with you from last week's episode mm-hmm. kiss my astral commented on our youtube do i want to hear this yeah okay and they said professional astrologer here <gasps> Thanks for sharing y'all's birth info. You both prioritize success and financial stability and aren't afraid to put up serious boundaries. Emotionally, you're easily on the same page. Hmm. Taryn has a moon slash Saturn conjunction, which can point to frustrations with fertility and also long-term commitment. That's kind of what they were focusing on, where it was like the two marriages. It was just like fertility? I think it, oh my God, this is going to make you aspire more. You have frustrations with it. Like you are like, 
I don't know. They don't um, explain enough. So we'll have to call What her. am I frustrated Don't about, worry Mama? about divorcing. You're in it for the long haul. Taryn also has Mercury and Venus in Virgo, which is grounding, organized, and will fixate on things looking for imperfections. But Cammy has Mercury and Venus in Aries and can say things and do things by diving in head first, which might come off hurtful or not well planned. P.S. You both you both have Mars and Gemini, so your sex life is absolutely compatible. Sheesh. Sexing is highly recommended. Okay. Would you love a little sexting? I sex love thing? sexting. Thank you, as kiss my ass, astrology mama. Yeah. So I thought that would make you feel a little I bit better sexting. that it was like, I also, it's everyone's different interpretation where some of that you could have read as similar yeah. to our other reading. Also, everyone was like, no, never get a reading from like a website that's just pulling. You have to go to a person okay. who knows what they're talking about. Okay. So I think we should get astrology readings. I'm down. Oh, also, um, happy 69th episode, PPs. 69, the, the Lord's number, the best number. 69 all the time, and it always makes me rhyme. 69, 69 time. Do you know what tune yeah, I'm doing? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Not at first, but then when you did 69. I was baby like, that's Einstein. From something. Baby Einstein. Or no, Baby yeah, Einstein. Yeah. Going yeah. on a trip. With my, my favorite, favorite rocket ship, ship. Little, Einstein. little Einstein. I think it's little. little. I always sing that. I just wiped my teeth. I don't know if I should be having coffee, but I haven't really had any today. Give it a go. So, um, peepees. Oh, this doesn't fuck my teeth up. If you've seen on our socials, pause. If you <gasps> haven't, then oh you my. need to follow us. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not that hard. It's um, really not. It's really not. It's the easiest thing you'll do all day. It's so easy to follow. It's so easy. So fucking easy. Um, Click. If you saw on our socials, we've chosen Clippy. our first month social media editor, uh, Clippy. We're Clippy. naming her Clippy. Um, I love that. Affectionately calling her Clippy. Clippy P, but just Clippy. Yeah. Um, Clippy came in hot with the oh edits. Oh my God. Hot with the memes. Yeah. We're proud I'm of Clippy. I'm so impressed. So impressed. And yeah. so excited. We went this direction and didn't hire some impersonal company who doesn't know anything about us or yeah. our PPs. Yeah. Or that your name is Taryn and not Taryn. Not Taryn. So we're excited about that. That was that was big for us. That was mm-hmm. huge, huge for us. Um, good job, Clippy. Shout good job, Clippy. You. We love you. I'd also like to say a couple things. Not about Uh-oh. Clippy. Um, as you saw in our last epi, we fought in the <laughs> middle of it. We had a showdown. Oh, yeah. People were mad that we like didn't share actually a lot of people are okay i mean are you seeing stuff youtube comments i I made the mistake of when i was deeply pmsing reading comments and i almost tore people apart i stopped myself i I had to delete a comment yesterday i deleted one the other day too (laughs) i told someone to relax i don't remember what it was on oh you your own comment but i used his name his name was like simon or something i said simon no no no. i deleted a comment from someone on our youtube okay tell me well, they were just like, if Taryn's so defeated after fights, it shows such an extreme power imbalance. And I'm like, dude. So wh- true. What? <laughs> what is wrong with people sometimes? I'm like, that's crazy. Like, are you a psychologist? No, they're, they're just like, oh, even I if just, they were, I saw this one time, but it's like, no, a psychologist would never say that because they would never make an assumption on a person or a couple based off of like one interaction True. and then type that online i would hope not i'd hope they'd be more professional but i'm like no that shows a difference in personality of like uh, sometimes i feel incredibly defeated yeah after a fight but yeah whenever it goes well and i feel like i've learned something about you and i feel like you've learned something about me that makes me excited i love learning about you it's yeah. so fun it's I, just so silly i appreciate your way of doing that of feeling of coming out with a little more pep in your step because you're excited yeah i come out yeah that was me just being like dead in a fight i'm like i can't eat i can't sleep i can't do anything yeah and the second you're out and i like your period really yeah it really is um but i was gonna say pp so we cut that out of the epi we went to we didn't cut it out we just weren't filming oh yes but i mean whatever we didn't put that in the episode yeah and um for many reasons and which we're not going to say because it's obvious um well no i think sometimes it is helpful to say it's like we aren't trying to hide yeah who we are and whatever but 
I think to have a healthy relationship when you're sharing yourself online, not everything needs to be online. Yeah. And sometimes in a fight, this holding a microphone, knowing a camera's on us is so impersonal. Totally. And I don't want us to overly filter yeah. what we're saying or be, I don't want us to be aware of eyes. It's very like voyeuristic. Yeah. In those moments. Like, and I wanted to come sit by you <clears throat> and put my hand on your leg and like have that connection. Yeah. Where sometimes like when we're sat here, there's like a disconnect. Right. So we, it was clear that it was like, oof. We both are feeling like a little triggered by something right now. Let's pause and yeah. let's reconnect. I don't think either of us knew that it was going to turn into like a longer discussion. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if I would say an argument, but yeah, disagreement. Yeah. That it wasn't like, oh, let's hide how we handle this. It was like, let's take a minute for each other because we care about each other. And this is bigger than a podcast. I think it's you that. I mean? Yeah. And I think the, we've said this before, but ideally there's not a world where everyone thinks that we fight perfectly because obviously we're not showing you every way that we fight i think totally. we've gotten a lot better but like think about you and your partner fighting and imagine filming that and putting it into the world it just <laughs> is not like a va it's just like why yeah so, our one friend was like i would never want to see myself in a fight but so anyway so we didn't include it then we went to um we hung out with some friends this weekend and as a straight couple and we started talking and we weren't hanging out with them as a straight couple they're a straight couple <laughs> i said it was a straight couple and you said as a straight couple oh cammy and i are straight now <laughs> <laughs> that fight scared us straight never being gay again oh my god but um it was so sweet they were like dude we've been fighting so much and we mm -hmm. were like that sucks like tell us about it and it's so then nice we, talking about that and with the couples all we, all present 100 percent. and then like we talked about the fight that we had mm -hmm. recently and then they talked about a couple of the fights that they had and then at the end of it at the end of it the guy was like i feel so much better right now like i feel so reassured hearing how yeah. you guys fight and that you guys fight and like we really got into what our roles are in the fight and like our bad patterns and like how shitty we can be and all that. It was and a very self-aware conversation. It was so cool. Mm -hmm. And then at the end <laughs> of the hang, we all pinky promised to not fight. We couldn't go home and fight about anything, <laughs> which obviously we we're going to get in a fight that night, but it was just like a funny thing. We were like, the next fight you get in, you have to all, all FaceTime face <laughs> each other and we have to talk each other off the ledge. Cause it is nice sweet. sometimes like, when you have people in your life and a lot of the fights one of us would relate to one then it would switch it wasn't like oh you're me yeah and you're Taryn a hundred percent yeah and I think that's so helpful because then it puts your own arguments into perspective totally because I can listen to another couple have a conflict and it sounds so silly and just clearly a miscommunication right but when we're in it I'm like no you're not understanding me this is bad and like oh no i hurt her and whatever it may be so to hear other people and be like oh god that sounds identical to the fight we had last week mm -hmm. it just kind of disarms everyone and it's like this is okay totally. this is normal everyone fights yeah. and people who i feel like they seem like so easygoing yeah like really good at communication they said the same about us yeah and it's like yeah we all are yeah we're still going to fight. We're still human. We still have our bad days. We still have our times where we're like extra sensitive or a little snippy. Like It's okay. And it is so normal. And I feel like we all kind of get hung up and like, is this okay? Wait, it's a, the people that I look up to don't look like they ever fight or when they do, even people watching us, oh, when they fight, they handle it so well. It's like, you just never know. Even if someone's being so transparent, you never know what's going on. Totally. So. And I... The one thing I will say, though, is that fighting is normal, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't work on it. <laughs> like no, that, like you normalize it. So you are working on 100%. it just like you would anything else. Get better at it. <laughs> yeah. It's it just I think a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, we just fight. It's just who we are. It's just our thing. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like it also doesn't have to be like yeah. the fact that we're talking about it and like working on it is because we're like this sucks mm -hmm. i don't want this forever and i think for us when we're like gonna be having kids soon it's mm -hmm. like i hated when my parents would have an argument in oh, front of me too I'd like die. i really didn't like it yeah i was like divorce immediately same especially <laughs> if it felt immature 
Like, yeah. Like, I would hear them. You're better than this, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I would hear them bicker and stuff, which is totally normal. But, like, when they were having, like, a catty little mm-hmm. fight in the kitchen, mm-hmm. I'd be like, what the fuck is happening right yeah. now? Like, you guys are the adults here. Yes. And you're not giving adult. A hundred percent. So I'm even more recently, like, just trying to get rid of those sort of fights for yeah. us. I think we both are. Because it's like, if we're being fucking b-holes to each other and there's a little guy in the corner just watching us i'm gonna be like we must stop like this is not but you don't want to just suppress it for the sake of them so it's like you want to work on handling it appropriately not raising our voices not taking too much time apart whatever it may be it's like we're not being shy to fight we're using it to practice and having productive fights Mm -hmm. and being able to communicate our feelings to each other not being scared to share stuff I feel like that's what happens with a lot of people and definitely us it's like getting sad not knowing how to share it holding it in longer yep. it comes out not in the right way yeah and if you're afraid to fight that's going to keep happening and it's almost when you do fight it's bigger totally. where if you're less scared and you go yeah you know what this might be a conflict what I'm about to say right now but I need to share this so I can set my boundary or like get on the same page and then you do mm-hmm and sure, maybe it means you have to take a second and have a time out and like breathe and calm yourself down and re- recenter yourself. But then if you're not afraid to fight, you can move forward and be better for each other. Right. That's I don't understand people who are like, oh my God, I'm so conflict averse. I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> that ain't good, Papa. That's not good. You know bad. who's not conflict averse? Who? The people on Love Island, USA. <gasps> and we are loving it. Guys, we can't spend too much time here, babe, because we will go too stuck far. Here. I literally went to write a note about it, and I was like, I can't even talk. I can't even think about it. But what I, I want about. to say, and I speak for me and my wife here, probably compl- I know this. Yeah, I know this to be true. Okay, we're Love Island fans. We've watched UK, US, Australia. Wait, before you say this, Girl Boss Town did a TikTok the other day, and she's like, I get, I become such a brat when people talk about how they're watching Love Island US. I'm like. Okay, well, I've been here for so long. Like, what, what are you talking? I'm like, that's how I feel. I'm like, were you here for season three UK? If not, pack it up. No, it's like your time watch on the island it, has come to it. Watch it, but like, you're not an you're a Casa Amor girl, and I'm an OG Island. A hundred percent. That's how I feel. That's like, I'm an asshole about it. I'm like, but but how long have you been watching it? Yeah, like, okay, you try to unpack your suitcase, mm-hmm. see if you stay a while. But mm-hmm. also, I've been here. Um, You've never even seen them smoke in the villa. So, did you say psh? I said psh. Whoa, and I did a that was hand new. Psh. That was new. I know. I okay. Like, psh, talk I'm to a the sassy hand. little bitch today, guys. Um, all I was gonna say is, as lifelong fans of this fucking show and reality TV connoisseurs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I cannot express enough how good this season of Love Island USA is. And if you do not do yourself a favor and yeah. take the time. Give it four episodes. See yourself fall in love. You will be missing out on what will truly Cultural be phenomenon. a historical season yeah. of reality You're going to gonna really regret it if you like can't talk to your peers about it. Because this stuff is groundbreaking. Even if I couldn't talk to anyone about it. I would try to just talk to myself about this it. This would be Honestly, still. Be it's like the Smithsonian of reality TV. Yeah. The way these people are wearing their heart on their fucking sleeve. Screaming. It's so good. Hugging. About the self-awareness. It's the, that they're like being really dramatic. Yes. It's, it's so real. It's so real. It's so real. I love it. Tonight's a massive night in the villa. We're very excited. We told our friends we cannot hang out past 9 p.m. because we are going to be watching the show with other friends texting live. Live, live texting. We have a lot going on. I owe a lot of our lives to the show. If any of the PPs are watching we could even like live chat and discord for the next Holy episode too i might just write because this will be up tomorrow i might just write in the discord like if anyone's watching at nine o'clock tonight where we can chat about it we could also do a um a love island channel in the we discord could. oh we could also i need to say i'm not a big um vanderpump rolls girly i don't know how i haven't gotten on that side of reality tv yeah but ariana maddox best rushing the hosting game. I am so impressed by her. Best and that host. takes a lot for me to say because it's probably the most jealous I've ever been of someone. Yeah. Like that's a dream job 
that I will never get, but it can still be a dream job. Don't say that. So mm, I will never get it. But Bid, she you're sat is, in front of like 7,000 manifestation books. I'm going to need you to not say I, stuff but like I also, that in our about home. Manifesting is like also being realistic. Like Don't, I'm not going to live on the moon. I'm sure, not going to host. That's different than you hosting a reality TV show. Okay. Those are I mean, I things. could host a reality TV show, The Love Island. Anyways, she. I'm so the impressed queer by Love her. Love Island, honey. But that's. I don't want it to be. I want it to be the Love Island. Just kidding. I'll take real. I'll take anything. Love uh, yeah, Island, bro. You're shooting. I'll your- take After Sun. <laughs> I will take the weird thing they're doing with like the Bella Twins. Yeah. What is that? The I like know, grainy the, video. It's worse quality than our podcast. Yeah. I will take that job. Clearly. And Clippy will edit clips. <laughs> Anywho. Anywho. Um, I have one more thing to say. Not say about Love Island. Say it, baby. Um, so peepees, as you know, we're in our early 30s. Um, and friendships in your early 30s is a little, it's fun, but it's also a little interesting because you start just being friends with couples. It's like all about your couple's yeah, friends now. So you're no easier. longer, yeah, you're no longer like, operating as a single unit most of the time it's too hard it's like the times that like i'm free and you're free it's just too much and so we've been seeing a lot of our couples friends recently bouncing from couple to couple (laughs) and i'd like to make a statement here today on the pod Mm. when couples say oh we're easy whatever you guys want yada yada (laughs) you're not easy no, this applies to anyone. Oh, 100%. This is not just couples. But when you, what that does is you think, oh, you think that when you say things like that, you are being like, whatever you want, you decide totally fine. I'm so easygoing. I'm so I'm easy. no fuss. I'll eat anything. I'll watch I'll anything. I'll go anywhere. I'll whatever. do anything. You tell me where to be and when. That is just going, <laughs> punting the responsibility to someone else Mm -hmm. that is you not wanting to help and no Mm -hmm. matter how much you say that's not the case that is how it feels yeah and I've just been appreciating the people in our life that are like look I have no real preference but I'm 51 percent towards Mexican food if that doesn't bother anyone let's do that yeah and if I need to make if I need to make the decision sure sure here it's not saying like you're not being selfish and being like, oh, Thai or Mexican? Nope. I want Mexican. Don't care if anyone else wanted Thai. You're just being like, oh, both of the, those sound great. I'd be happy with either. But instead of staying there, you go, but if I had to pick, I'd go Mexican. And 100%. it's like amazing because I actually truly am 50-50. Let's use your 1% to make the decision here. 100%. And, and if you're the person that is going to say, we should hang out, we should get dinner, we should do this. You've got to be the reservation person as well. Yeah, say, hey, are you free to go to this restaurant on mm-hmm. this day? Perfect. How seven work? Great. Yep. Seven actually doesn't work for me. Can we do seven thirty? Done. Done. So being, where should we go? What sounds good? Oh my god. You pick, and I'll be there. You know, I won't be there. I I that is one of my biggest pet peeves. Yeah, I won't be there. And I think also when we earlier on in our relationship when we would argue about cleaning more. Mm-hmm. that is kind of how I felt in those times where it was like okay it's getting sh- turned on me I no, am I- feeling my back to the wall <laughs> just kidding go ahead I'm just saying I think this applies in a lot of <laughs> yeah. situations that we don't realize totally when you're the one like not thinking about it yes where it's like you're putting that mental load on someone I think couples do this a lot yeah like a lot of times it is like I, I stereotypically happens to the mom where it's like all the mental loads going on her to organize things, to do things. Yeah. And I feel like partners are like, oh, I'm being easy. I'll do whatever. Tell me what to do. And it's like people don't realize that mental load is also work. Yeah. So being easygoing is not always easygoing. It's like take initiative. Yeah. That's actually being easygoing, yeah. helping out and stepping up. I'm just saying it applies to a lot of things. It's like it's it's like 
decision paralysis or whatever it's called option paralysis mm-hmm. where it's like it's really hard to order from the cheesecake factory because there's 10 million things on the menu but yeah. it's really easy to order it in and out because there's four burgers and you're like and you just literally get it however way you want so don't be the cheesecake factory don't be the cheesecake don't be factory. cheesecake be, be the in and out be the in and out you wish to see in the world that's why i loved I when say. i first went vegan and most restaurants didn't really have a lot i could eat there would be one option for me and I was like, I don't even care if that's my least favorite meal. Yep. I'm getting it. And it was so nice. I love that for you. Yeah, it was great. So yeah, help your friends out. Help your spouse spouse out. Even if Be you helpful. do not care, help them out. Help them out and watch Love Island USA oh. season six. <laughs> okay, babe. I haven't even told you what I've done for the today's episode for oh the 69th. God. What did you do? I partnered 69 with ChatGPT. You partnered. This episode is brought to you by ChatGPT. Oh my god. I wish. Yeah. I pay twenty dollars a month for it, so no. Wait, you have to pay for it? You pay oh, for a great. smarter GPT. Oh. Like not I a smarter, have, like, but like the dumbed it's GPT. it's not dumb, sorry. It's like to get like the image, like Dolly, which makes images for yeah. you and stuff like that. The yeah. The there's all advanced. the characters <laughs> it's more you get the whole every crayon lock the different skins um so anyway i've been like really falling in love with using chat gpt lately yeah you're talking you talk about it all day i even hear you in your meeting you're like oh let me put on chat gpt today's <laughs> pp story you're like this one's a little bit too long to read i'm gonna throw it in chat gpt to shorten it yep it's kind of crazy so you're such a stan dude recent <laughs> recent it's because i really am trying to only use it in ways that i think it's going to make my life better yeah which is and it is time saving mm-hmm. and research so like the uh, the fucking presidential whatever's coming up election jesus yeah. christ I was like, what are you Whoa. saying <laughs> um and i have been using that to like help me under i've been using chat gpt to yeah. help me understand what's happening so like it's like better than a google search that's going to give you articles and you have to decipher totally the bias what are there not some forms of biases in chat gpt like someone's making it uh, like ideally no and yeah is the thing ideally but i mean it's not as biased as like going to foxnews.com yeah, yeah. fair but anyway so like one thing that i've been using it for for like the election is being like if friends say oh trump loves gay people trump's not doing anything <laughs> against gay people i'll go into chat gpt and be like show me 10 statistics yeah. and data points that show that donald trump has not been working to- uh, towards like more equality for the queer community yeah. or whatever instead of just being like nah he's this way instead of like yeah. go- basing off of this idea you have of the candidates but not being able to pull flat out facts totally and or if you just can't recall the specific and obviously i'm pulling specific facts so that alone is not the whole picture because i'm just pulling specific things but like at least i have things to talk about when like i am debating friends or like learning Mm -hmm. you know along with the people so today i use chat gpt Mm -hmm. to it's 333 happy 333 happy to first fix some of my fears around astrology <laughs> fix your fears when it told me i was gonna have two marriages i was like Fuck. you asked chat gpt am i <laughs> no but i did ask it for queer divorce rates oh okay i was curious about and this made me feel better approximately one percent of married same-sex couples get divorced each year compared to about two percent of married heterosexual couples wait wait wait, wait. That percentage feels so low if 50% of marriages fail. I guess each it's year. just each year. It's only that percentage of it. Still, that feels wild. So there's that. Okay. Half the amount. Half the amount. Fab. Fewer than one in five same-sex marriages end in divorce, which is the lower than the heterosexual marriage rate, which mm-hmm. is lovely. Um, And then, oh, that's kind of it for divorce rates. But that made me feel nice. Does that make you feel nice? Um... I don't care as much about that. <laughs> Those stats. You know I don't. You know I don't. I know. I I'm know. like, that's, that's, that's them. This is us, baby. I know, but still. Sure. That, it makes me feel good that it made you feel good. But it also, doesn't it just make you feel good for the peepees and for everyone that like the lesbians and the gays and the queers, we all have it like I, I more needed dialed a stat in. to tell me that gay people are better. You want to hear more? Yes. The queer community 
is hotter. No. Uh, I mean, yes. Has boosted the U.S. economy. <laughs> Legalizing same-sex marriage has boosted the U.S. economy by $3.8 billion since the landmark ruling. Let's fucking let's go. Let's fucking go, careers. baby. Same-sex, let's ride. Wait, does it explain how? It could if I clicked in, but okay, I'm not but going to. but we're just to. going with the base fact. Nope. Okay, cool. Um, general health outcomes. Yeah. This one's sad. Oh, no. Individuals in same-sex marriages report a faster decline in self-rated health compared to those in different sex marriages. What? So, like, if you're in a same-sex marriage, people in same-sex marriages yeah. are saying that their health declines. They report declining health. I think we're just way more aware of our health. <laughs> it could be that. I think we're just on it it could be that I think however that. lesbian and bisexual women report more adverse health outcomes example overweight obesity smoking problem drinking compared to heterosexual women because we're vibing what because we're, we're eating <laughs> we're drinking we're partying we're having so much fun that's maybe you know how people like when they're in a happy relationship they get plumper yes we're having a we're just having a so we're just outside. feeling like the queers are just happier and that's fine imagine you spent your whole life at a sleepover oh, you're eating the candy <laughs> you're eating the your pizza. problem drinking you're having the caviar <laughs> champagne that's fair. we're out here vibing that's fair we're happier okay um a couple more i'll put a positive spin on any of these keep this, coming this makes me feel good okay no significant differences were found between children in same-sex married families and those in heterose heterosexual married families regarding physical health outcomes so yeah same level of health on both sides okay and studies show that children of same-sex parents have home lives and outcomes that are as good as or better than those of children with heterosexual parents you hear that or better better you hear that susan <laughs> in kansas you hear that robert it's always a fucking form of bobby bro you're i'm so in love with wow bobby. we haven't done a cousin bobby joke in like 15 episodes i know it's been a really long time Whoa. um two more things on the income did something else. and then i'm moving to, towards sex okay same sex spouses are typically younger more educated and more likely to be employed compared to those in opposite sex marriages wow so just sit if with anyone's that. listening <laughs> who's not gay <laughs> are you a little bummed <laughs> so okay bummed. next next uh, Same-sex married couples generally have higher incomes compared to opposite-sex married couples. Yeah, that's so not surprising. However, I would like to know with that one. Tell me. Is if it it's gay men. Gay men. Double it. Men mm. make more money. <laughs> you put two men together making more money. Well, let me see if I click through. That and was from the Census Bureau. And whenever you kind Bureau. of like get out of the whole gender norms of like the man working, the wife staying at home, we're both working. Yep. Which is... I question every day. No, um, fair. I did click that article. What's she saying? And it's a picture of two boys. Yeah, it's the it's the two. It's probably the rich men's. men. It's the fucking men. But I'm still taking that as a win for Whatever. all of us. Um, <clears throat> so those were fun, and that made me feel good. That makes me feel Kay. great. Now, for the 69th episode, I really dove into some sex related data points and stats for the queer community and some are not just queer related but i thought were interesting give them to me girl did you know that well let's start with the historical perspective on queer sex oh did you know that ancient civilizations no sorry we're all having gay sex did you know that in the kama sutra there's mm -hmm. a chapter on homosexual relations indicating that queer sex was acknowledged and discussed thousands of years ago yeah, they were, like, always getting it on. 100%. It was all queer. In fact, Leonardo da Vinci was arrested twice on charges of sodomy, which is dark, but reflecting both the presence of and the societal attitudes towards queer sex in Renaissance Italy. Yeah. I didn't know Leonardo da Vinci was playing with the D. I'm not surprised. Do you know anything about him? That he likes to... <laughs> I mean, like, wasn't he wasn't he the one making all the statues? I think. So he had to get in there. I mean, like, to see it himself. They're so specific. That's they're perfect. True. He saw some shit, and they're beautiful. It's like that is the proper male gaze. He needed. <laughs> he needed you know? real 
firsthand experience Duh. before he got into well, it. Well, it's like your art, you like express like what you love usually too. So. What do you think the oldest sexed uh, sex toy was? Oh my God. I'm so scared to know what people were putting up their little hoo-hahs. <laughs> yes. Oh no. It was 28,000 years old. Oh no. In Germany. Germany. Those little freaks. What are you up to over there? <laughs> um, I'm so scared. Is it like stone? It is stone. It is? It is a stone dildo. I was just going to say, well, obviously, like, they're putting stone up there. A 28,000-year-old <gasps> stone Honey, dildo. Honey, I thought you were telling me the size. I thought you were just <laughs> telling me the size of the dildo. This shit is 28,000 28, inches in- thick. <laughs> thick. And that's how Germany died. Wow. Yeah, so pretty crazy. Guten Tag. Did you know that the global sex toy market is projected to reach $52.5 billion by 2026? Did not know that. Showing a significant increase in acceptance and usage. Mm -hmm. We're all out here. That checks out. What's your favorite sex toy while we're here? Um, I would, well, I would say favorite i hate favorite anything because i'm like there's a time place for everything i just love a little vibrator i think that's very enjoyable like frequency of use but i i think i like to use that on you please dear god no family members be watching this right now no who's watching who has made it this far that's in our family oh thank yeah i hope not i don't know randomly we'll get a text from somebody who i'm like they'll be like i saw blah 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 and i'm like it's never my mom I don't know. Whatever. Sometimes, sometimes they go on. Tell it. me, tell me more about how you like to use that vibrator. I'm like, just... <laughs> stop it. I'm gonna have to turn the camera off. We have to go. Um, fight. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, yeah. Anywho, I'm um, stop it. You're making me blush. Um, I think that would be my favorite to use on you. Um, I think less frequently, but I think a strap on can be really fab. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to say really fast. And really I was like, fab. Whoa. Really fab. If, if the time is right. We haven't done that in a while now. No. That I think about and it's it. like not something that I want very frequently either. Mm-hmm. I don't like there to have to be like a lot of like not. I don't mind that things are involved, but like a big to do. It does kind of get you out of the mood if yes. there's like strong. Like, like you got to fit it and you got to yeah. like be and you're like, is, you know, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. It's like too, it, it, it's hard to have that like in the moment to me. Yeah. But that is fun every once in a while. It is fun. But it's just like, yeah, it, it can really take you out of it. So I feel like vibrators are always nearby. Yeah. I think you charged 10 of them yesterday, the other day. <laughs> the other day. <laughs> they were all out. And there is nothing worse than a vibrator turning off. Oh my when god! You're getting and literally on. the other day, nightmare. It, the other morning, Taryn asked me to use one on her, and <laughs> we start. Since when are you being like coy on this podcast? I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling you're, silly. You're, you are. Um, Taryn asked me to use a vibrator on her, and not even thirty seconds in, dies. Which and I, I died. Oh uh, yeah, and I I had prefaced it. I was like, I really think. Most of them are dead because the one was dying yeah. and I knew we hadn't tried. Like you have your reserve and then you have the reserve, reserve. Like you have your favorites. And I was like, this is not, I, I had a feeling it was not going to work out. First one dies. Okay. We try another one. We scramble. Second one dies. Third one dies. Mm-hmm. I think we got to the fourth and it worked. The fourth one. But oh, it was the, it was the <laughs> intense one. We have one that's like, <laughs> what is that called? It's like. It like sucks. I know. I don't know what that one's called. They're, they're called like air sucky. Oh, I think not the brand. No, no, no. But it's like, it's like <laughs> sorry round. It literally looks like it has like its own a clit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but like also a mouth in the clit. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so scary. And there's just no like. It's, it's great. It's zero to a hundred. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It can be too much someone's at the door not somebody something. y'all not we, not somebody literally <laughs> right on the other side of this wall delivering and, and we're, we're like, like it has its own clit and it's <laughs> like what they're like oh, i'm back at the lesbian's house um that's, okay that's crazy so there's that and vibrators also remain the most popular sex toy 52 percent of american oh, women I mean, own one they're versatile you can Wait. use them by yourself or with friends <laughs> You're, oh, what? you're my friend. Yeah, I'm just but... saying it doesn't have to be your wife or your Baby, significant other. You're freaking me out. It could just, I don't know. Who's 
using vibrators with their friends like yeah, their friends with benefit i'm just trying to keep it broad like okay. with a partner with somebody <laughs> or you can use it alone you can use it in the shower you can pack it it's they're so versatile yeah they're perfect yeah a bullet vibrator target you guys target has some great ones yeah oh my god our favorite one is target yeah we right have now, like right? three of them because instead of just charging them i bought more um yeah but that's silly and we learn from our mistakes we do but did you learn what i said 50, what percent of women own one 57 two 52. 52 that is so many women yeah you think my mom owns one? <gasps> why is that where your head goes because i thought of who's a woman and then i thought of my mom like I, I just my mom's don't the care. average woman I don't want to think about that, though. Okay, do you think your mom does? I don't want to think about that either. <laughs> Baby, it's the 69th I think... episode. We're chatting about all the ladies in our life. Ladies who lunch. I think your mom does. I think my mom doesn't have one. I think I'd say the opposite. Okay. Well, maybe because we don't want to think about our own moms having vibrators. Perhaps I should ask my mother. Ask her. I will. Call her right now. Okay. She'll kill no, you. No, she, she would She'll fucking kill, kill you. me, you guys. My mom hates pictures. She hates being on social. Hates pictures. No, I just Like, that has I, anything to <laughs> do with calling her to ask her for if, if she has a vibrator. Okay, so there's that. Now we're going to talk about sexual intimacy and long-term relationships. Ooh. And then we'll talk about orgasm. Okay. Rates. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you for the outline. I know. <laughs> this is this was chat GPT and I didn't have time to oh, edit it. I was like, this sounds weird. No, no, no. Okay. I could tell. Couples who have sex at least once a week are significantly happier in their relationship compared to those who have less frequent sex. No wonder I'm depressed this week. Yeah, bro. But I'm also on my period and you don't like to have period sex. You know how many times we've said that on this pod? Yeah. I feel like you just dragged me through the mud. I know. I'm waiting for them to tell you to get over it. <laughs> tell me to get over it i know i should get over it it's not it's not gross to me it's messy that's yeah. all yeah you kind of have to do it in the shower i'm i'm not like ew i don't want to touch you i don't or be need touched. you to have sex with me when i'm on my period <laughs> no we are always having sex that's, together i know no 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 i can yes but like i don't, <laughs> I don't be touched like, on my period <laughs> but you can't say <laughs> I know. I don't, I need, don't you need you to have sex with me, but I'm going to have sex with your body. It's crazy. I Yeah, weird wording. I don't need touched on my period because I feel icky. But the problem is you agree. Like you feel icky on your period, but like I would touch you on your period. I just want touched on mine. Yeah, I mean. But then that kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah I think. Like, <laughs> I'm also like. If you feel grossed out, not grossed out, sorry. If you feel like it's icky for you. I don't feel like it's icky for me. My body just feels uncomfortable. Yeah, okay, I see that. But orga having an orgasm when you're on your period is supposed to be so good for you. Like it helps like your your cramps go away. I mean, I'm still down for like a little alone vibrator moment. It's like, it's like, and it's not that I don't want you to be there. It's just that I don't. There's so many things. A tampon, I'm like, don't touch me. What if you push it up? Okay, health That's anxiety one is one factor. Two, what if you push just it up? messy. Like, just like... Mm. Se okay, this is going to really be a lot, I think. <laughs> say it. You don't want to say it. No, I'm just like... Say it. I'll always cut... I can cut it out if you don't like it. Okay. I think that it is hot, obviously, when you can feel how wet the other person is okay and, or you yeah. both both sides the yeah. wetter the better <laughs> yeah it's beautiful Beth, when it becomes wonderful. blood okay it's just like not hot anymore to me that's okay that is okay yeah that's all that doesn't need to be controversial yeah you're not gonna be a salt burn scene yeah so i just want to say that <laughs> not your voice you're, just, oh. you're like please don't cancel me please don't no cancel no me. you can't can, you sh oh oh yeah it's still on you can cancel oh. me oh it has like a bunch of like stuff around it this time it always does screen. okay Tara i didn't see that i'm freaking got out. nervous that our camera wasn't recording I'm anymore but out. i think she's just having a little mini panic about um what she just shared with everybody okay introducing variety in sexual activities can boost satisfaction Blank percent of couples who experiment with new things in bed report higher relationship satisfaction. Guess which percent? 30%. 66. Amazing. Times that, times 33 by two. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's like get wild. Yeah. Try new shit. Just try to, like, it's not even get wild. No, it's like just try something new. If you don't like it, you don't like it. 
but then it's like it's a bonding moment to do because it's very yeah, vulnerable it's with vulnerable. your partner especially a long-term relationship where you like really know each other you're very like comfortable around each other so to be uncomfortable mm-hmm. around each other is fun and exciting and totally. great yeah i also think just like novelty in general like trying something new yeah and stuff is so good for you yeah that, of course that translates to sex of course what do you want to try that we haven't tried hmm anything come to mind no i mean i've always i think i've even said this on the podcast like i want to like go somewhere and like hit on each other but i just like i don't know if i have if my acting chops are up for it like i think i'd just find it silly at some point but like i don't think your acting chops are up to it not to say you're not a good actor (laughs) but we've tried like i've tried like little no but it needs to be planned like it makes me giggle when it's like out of nowhere where you're like hey i'm taryn and i'm like this i know who you are <laughs> just kidding so we need no to... it, like i need to be ready for it if it catches okay. me off guard i'm like Tee. yeah um but actually doing like acts in bed that we haven't tried what haven't we tried <laughs> i'd like to try one of those swings oh <gasps> yes like when they like you sit up yeah on the thing that's like on a door frame yes i'd like to try that yes i'm i'm scared where did we see that it was uh, on a show. love is blind or uh married at first sight yes married at first yeah. sight. yeah yeah um absolutely i think that cool. would be very fun i'm in but i'm also scared that it would fall <laughs> um i don't think you'd fall if you get up there anyone could fall what do you mean i wouldn't fall it's i just like, feel like we- i would fall and you wouldn't fall that makes no sense. That's okay. That's but how I, I feel. But I'm like, feel. I'm scared that I'll <laughs> I'm scared that I'll fall. But and I because that would really telling you take the scared. wind out of my sails. But you don't know that I'm not gonna fall. Like how does this thing get installed properly? I don't know. Maybe we have to ask someone's dad to oh, like come and see. It. Like do you call like <laughs> a task rabbit and be like, "Hello, sir, can you install my sex swing?" I don't know. Frank just Frank made the crazy noise. He just He's got like, so upset. He's disgusted. like, you guys are nasty. Okay, orgasm rates. Wait, what's something you want to try? You don't get to just ask me. I said, I came up with the sex <laughs> swing, bro. <laughs> you didn't say one, so fuck that. <laughs> You're right. You know what? Now that you funny. don't just get to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Listen. You're right. Frank's being so silly behind the camera. You He's staring so- into like a camera that we have that we use only when we're not home <laughs> yeah he is staring into the security camera what's he doing oh my god i want to look up that footage later because that's gonna be so cute oh my god what if he thinks he's vlogging he's like hey yo you guys <laughs> my name's frank hey guys i'm frank this i have a zipper <laughs> and i'm chewing on my blanket every day all day and i'm big and i'm gray sometimes my mom's like well you look less gray kind of look brown <laughs> okay uh anyways back to sex orgasm rates okay <laughs> Research indicates that lesbian women have the highest oh. orgasm rates compared to heterosexual and bisexual women, with yeah. 86% of lesbian women reporting orgasms during sex. That totally checks out to me. Yeah. That's obvious. It's perfect. If anything, I'd expect it to be higher. It's like, one, can't fake it with each other. Yep. Two, you understand each other's bodies. Because you have it. You have the same stuff going on. Yep. Where it's like, yeah yeah we might like different stuff but like it doesn't take a lot of telling me what i need to do yep communicate better yep yeah also duration of sex the rumors are true lesbians do have longer sex on average yeah our sessions extend beyond 30 minutes is what it says 30 minutes does not sound very okay, long. Okay, so the reason... People are having the, sex for less than 30 minutes? See, now that got me thinking. Are people having, like, five-minute sex? Okay, this Ten makes sense sex? why, like... Straight any, men? Yeah, anytime you watch, like, uh, a movie? reality show about straight people, and it's like, how often would your partner ideally like to have sex? And they're like, X amount of times a day. They're like, five times a day. Oh, because I'm like, literally... You don't have to... Do you not have to eat, sleep, and go to work, too? Like, mm-hmm. how are you having sex five times a day? So because true. they're not having sex for an hour plus. Yep. Like, I think a lot of queer women, the first time that they had sex with a woman, it was like, all night. Yes. 
that's typically that was what my happens. experience yeah and that was your experience yeah so that's everybody <laughs> and that's all we know that's all the lesbians <laughs> here <laughs> well also that is the case for everyone i've dated too yes like i don't want to have to say that at you but like like it's not like no, same. just the first time that no, no, you no. I mean, have sex first, with someone first time each time you have a partner yeah you get so wrapped up in each other and you're like first time having sex like literally it's just gonna be forever it's also like you have a tea party in the middle you order food you you're doing a lot Pillow talk, but hanging out but you are yeah sexing throughout you're sexing throughout that's beautiful anyway yeah. so go us we're perfect yeah last couple things i'd like to share with you yes the most common kinks include bondage power play and mm-hmm. sensory play okay that feels right Those that are easy. feels right yep what is a kink like a common kink that you're like never ever ever could try do you have one that you're like never wouldn't mind doing that i mean never do i even have like a curiosity for it because mm-hmm. i feel like there's kinks where you're like i want to try that mm-hmm. and then there's stuff where you're like that is hot but it's not something i want to do but it's like thinking about it or seeing it can turn you on but it's not something that you want to participate in a couple are coming to mind for me what you got when the people dress up like dogs when the people <laughs> as our dogs are like rowling in the bath i'm like the, like when you're dressed up like an animal people who do that do they have pets i don't know because i feel like that's one i don't want to do it but it also like that I would just be thinking about our dogs and that's gross. I'm more just like, it's so, like sometimes the outfit's kind of like comical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it I, would make me giggle. I know. I'm like thinking of you with like a little nose on and like rough. little ears. <laughs> rough, rough. I like it rough. I'd be like, oh, that was good. I'm good at that. <laughs> that's one for me that Wait, is... have you done that before? That was too good. No. Maybe at a sex party <laughs> or two. Oh, <laughs> she's got the puns. Okay. My other two are very health anxiety related. That checks out. I would, l- I like the feeling of you putting your hands on my neck. Yeah. But the like full choke, mm-hmm. I spend the whole, I spend that experience being like a little nervous. It's a little much maybe i know and i feel like we've talked about this where too much i'm just yeah what if it is too much i mean you a a football tapped you in the chest yesterday (laughs) so lightly and you were like what if what happened to demar hamlin happens to me (laughs) that was for our backyard only (laughs) but it makes sense but i feel like there are techniques when you're choking someone during sex it's very different than like hurting someone choke it's like different type of grip where you're putting pressure yeah but you even if it is like that in your head you're still like what if something's wrong here it's more just like i'm not relaxing yeah and i'm not turned yeah on. you're like i can't enjoy this um you need light touching i need i'm happy with aggressive touching anywhere else no i know i'm talking about your neck okay yeah, yeah. um there's that and then i had another one but i can't remember it health now. related oh like a gag um yeah like i i'm like where's my tongue go yeah like, i'm not into a gag can't really breathe i have a deviated septum it's, it's not, not gonna be me. good for me <laughs> <laughs> not for us um I love you what, do you have any that kind of knife play yeah that is you. you don't like pokey so i don't want to be scared like i i like a little bond like that's not scary to me like yeah. i don't mind a little restraint Same. i don't want to like i'm scared of needles and sharp objects so i would actually get that look out of your eye <laughs> get that look out of your eye Ooh, go upstairs <laughs> I don't how even, did you see that what do you mean how did i see that what did I, I do dude you are <laughs> so transparent when you're turned on it's so clear <gasps> I was like, every thought went out of my brain. You guys, that is so crazy. I, in my head, was like, this chat is actually turning me on. And I, like, the, I feel like, I I don't even know what it is, but, like, in those movies, whenever, like, someone, not possessed, that sounds crazy, yeah. but, like, when they shut your their eyes and open and they're, like, different eyeballs, yeah. that's what you did. You, like, blinked, and I was like, 
my babies are not. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling crazy. Oh, anyhow, <gasps> can't fake that. I wasn't even trying to like that. Was I was not trying I, to. Oh, I know. Oh, I know, honey. It was very subtle, but if I had a wiener, easy. I'd be having a boner. Wow. That I don't understand. I've never even thought of having a boner, but that would be it. I, anytime I'm turned on in like a public setting, I'm like, oh my God, what would I do Mm -hmm. if I had a penis right now? (laughs) What would you do? I think about like, like how uncomfortable it must be on just like normal occasions. Oh, horrible. Swimming. Oh. It's all stuck. (sighs) We check Frank, we're trying to podcast. Can you not choke on your toy over there? He's good. When it's like, like, kind of like stuck on it too much. No, what? Like when you ever see a guy get out of a pool? I've never looked at a guy's wiener getting out of the pool, honey. You've never just happened to see a guy's wiener when you're getting out of the pool. Not his wiener, but like his shorts. Yeah, what are you what talking are, about? What are you talking about? Why do Maybe we always have a lot of guy wieners? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I no longer have a boner. We're talking about my <laughs> Yeah, literally. No, I'm like, I'm just... if, if I had one, it would be like this. And then it's like this. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Well, thank you. I for, think that's all that I brought. Thank you for all those incredible stats. All I heard was lesbians forever. We're amazing. We oh. are. What? Say that again. Keep going. Lesbians forever. You. We're amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's all. High traffic area, mama. <laughs> High traffic area, mama. Um, less things that studies have shown that individuals who engage in BDSM report lower levels of anxiety and <gasps> higher levels of well-being compared to the general population. So choke well, me and call me. Calm me. <laughs> <laughs> well, tie me up and slap me silly. Well, slice my... F- no, honey, no knife play. Well, t- well choke my... I think my tie me up and slap me silly was kind of perfect. <laughs> it was better. <laughs> Don't think we need to keep going. It was bitter. Um. Anyways, I think we have a pee pee story for Would the day. Would you like to be a reader? Sure. No. Chat. Just have Chat GPT read it out loud. <laughs> what if it's like a really annoying voice? It's like my girlfriend. Yeah. They like make. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. So. Wait. Oh my god, it's still long. I know. So we got a pee pee story. Be it was. We got a work, guys. Be Wait, honest do you with need you. To, do I need to change these names? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. We're getting a lot of pee-pee stories, and they are juicy. But if we open an email and it's long... I am inclined to r- am try. in time to skip. Listen, practice those creative writing skills and condense it. Or what I did today... Use ChatGPT to condense it. I put the whole story in ChatGPT. I said reduce this by fifty percent. Okay, so I yeah I do need to change this. Name. Change the names, baby. Okay, let's help this PP. My girlfriend and I had been together for four years before breaking up last year. We reconnected six months later and worked on our relationship. During our separation, she met a girl named Rebecca, and they became friends. I found out Rebecca had feelings for my girlfriend, which made me uneasy. Mm -hmm. My suspicions grew when my girlfriend revealed she met Rebecca on a dating app, and they had gone on a date. Although my girlfriend was honest with Rebecca about not being over me, they stayed friends. However, Rebecca got touchy when drunk, Mm. making my girlfriend uncomfortable. One night, Rebecca confessed her feelings for my girlfriend, who made it clear she didn't reciprocate, and distance herself out of respect for me. Despite my discomfort, I thought I couldn't ask my girlfriend to cut Rebecca off since we weren't officially back together yet. Eventually, Rebecca claimed to be over my girlfriend and started dating other girls. I still hadn't met Rebecca, so we arranged a Sunday brunch. Initially, Rebecca refused but later agreed. At brunch, we all got along well until Rebecca, after drinking, got touchy with me instead of my girlfriend. Whoa, Rebecca. She even tried to make a move on me in the bathroom. After discussing the event, my girlfriend decided to cut Rebecca out of her life. Yeah. My question is was it wrong for me to ask my girlfriend to remove Rebecca from her life I feel bad about it but think Rebecca's behaviors were disrespectful I tried to give Rebecca a chance which not many people would do knowing her feelings for my girlfriend sorry if chat GPT ruined that story PP Rebecca's a loose cannon and yeah. deserves to be cut out yeah I think this situation can get tricky when it's like asking someone to cut somebody out or not it's if someone's disrespecting you and your partner is not 
putting them in their place Mm -hmm. and handling that, Mm -hmm. that's not okay. Like they're making it so they can't be friends with them. Right. But I think it does get tricky because it depends how you and your partner are. If there's like respect and understanding. I get nervous to say that it's okay to ask for that because some people are one, just controlling. Yes. And two, cutting out a problem doesn't fix the actual issue at hand. Mm -hmm. You should be able to trust your partner enough. Yeah. So it gets a little complicated. But if this person flat out isn't respecting you, like if somebody was in your life and I wanted to try to make amends and make sure we were all good and everything was okay and we asked them to brunch and at first they're like, no, I don't want to. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, they don't want to be around me? That was a red flag as well. That was weird. And then the touching in the bathroom. Like that was crazy. Like being touchy in general, I like – take with a grain of salt sometimes because I feel like at least I'm a very touchy person and I yeah only with Cammy mean it in a flirty way yeah but like I wouldn't be surprised if someone was like yeah Taryn was really touchy like I do I feel sometimes like I'm like put my hand on someone's back or yeah, like hug them or that's whatever. That's just how you are. And I think if people know you, it's yeah. clear that you're not doing that to any one person. Yeah. And, and I only do it with people. I wouldn't do it with a new person like that. No, I mean, you know, that she made a move on her in the bathroom. That's, that's what different. I'm saying. Once it became that. That's not just like that's talking and putting your hand on somebody while you're 100%. speaking to them. That's beyond. That's buku behavior. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. I just feel like there are, People, I wish people just trust their instincts a little bit more. Yeah. Especially women. I feel like we have such a superpower in our instincts. And so often we try to suppress them and ignore them because I we feel bad for prejudging someone. At least that's the case for me. Yeah. And I've never been wrong with my intuition on somebody. Mm-hmm. So it can be really tricky. But I think in most cases, this situation was very clear. You should not feel bad for asking your girlfriend whether they were you were their partner at the time or not totally to set boundaries with this person when you were trying to rekindle something with them if you're watching i'm sorry the video cut out if you're listening no changes for you Mm -hmm. anyways um yeah what are your thoughts on asking partners to cut people out i feel like just like you said like making it a being aware making your partner aware that something is making you uncomfortable Mm -hmm. is the key Mm -hmm. but also being sure to not blame your partner yeah is like and that's something that I've worked on a lot because sometimes I can be like I'll feel awkward around some or like someone will give me weird energy Uh uh-huh and then I will take it out on Cammy yeah or something and that's all right it's easier to take not take it out on your partner but it's easier to kind of like handle it and sometimes when you're showing you're upset yeah it feels aimed at them because you're not gonna go up to some person that you don't know and be like stop doing that and it's like yes what am I doing because then you're gonna sound like crazy and that you don't have a solid relationship you should be able to go to your partner which you have come to me and be yeah. like this person is making me uncomfortable like I would like you to be aware of this yeah, I think it's so difficult to like balance those things. You don't want to be controlling in a relationship, but you yeah. also want to set your boundaries and be clear. But I think you just talk about that with your partner and make it. Oh, those videos. Oh, off. my God. Karen gave a big thumbs up to the <laughs> camera. That's off. I forgot. Um. Anyways, yeah. we love you, little pee We love you. Thank you guys for tuning in yet again. Happy 69. Happy 69. Do something fun for 69th Epi. Oh, do something so fun. And there's only one thing to do. 69, your local pee pee. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. That's cute. That is cute. I love that. Yeah. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.